She's back. Krista Freeland is back taking questions from reporters. I wonder if she'll have any of them arrested. Let's hear what she had to say and what questions were asked. Deputy Prime Minister, documents obtained by Canadian Press show your government was warned that housing construction had not kept up with population growth, largely because of Canada's immigration targets. Why did your government not heed that warning and lower immigration levels? Good question. Honest question, just question. It's true. The increase in demand for housing, the unbelievable increase in demand for housing because of these hundreds of thousands of new individuals flooding the nation every single year have meant that the housing market is or continues to soar. It means that the demand for housing increases, continues to rise, and as such, price, the price for housing, must also increase to level out equilibrium, to meet the increase in demand. So one of the ways, the most important way, the critical step in removing or reducing this housing crisis in Canada is to right now stop this mass immigration policy. It has to stop. You have to slow down demand for housing. You have to slow the demand so that prices for homes decrease, thereby, in essence, stopping the bleeding. So why won't Krista Freeland and her government do that? Um, thank you for the question, Simon. Um, and let me say this. She doesn't have a clue. She doesn't even know where to start, precisely because the objective of her government is not to cure the housing crisis, but rather to turn this nation into a super state without borders and without boundaries. So the answer is actually very simple. Why does Krista Freeland and her government not stop immigration to reduce the demand on new housing? It's because their goal is not to reduce the demand on housing. Their goal is not to solve the housing crisis. Their goal instead is to import as many new individuals to this country as possible. That's why they're not stopping and they won't stop. As a country, Canada is probably the country in the world, which is the most welcoming of new Canadians. Not virtuous. Also, the term new Canadians is uh, a useful term for Freeland. That is, she makes it sound like the people who are being shoveled here are already Canadian, but they're not. They're not, right? They're immigrants. At any rate, she acts like it's morally virtuous to, or for a nation, to introduce as many new individuals as possible. That's not virtuous. That's not inherently moral. It's not mentioned anywhere in the scripture. There is no, no command that says, thou shall import as many new people to your country as possible. That's not a command. That's certainly not a command, especially when there are cultures around the world that do not harmonize with our own. And there are cultures that are inferior to our own. There are cultures that hate women's rights. There are cultures that hate freedom, hate justice, hate truth seek to restrict the rights and freedoms of individuals. So how is it possible then that the beliefs of Canada, of proper Canada, of true Canada, not this pseudo Canada that Freeland and her cackle are trying to introduce, how is it possible that the rights and the beliefs of Canada can harmonize with those inferior cultures that would instead see, for example, women not allowed to show their hair? Doesn't work. It can't work. So Freeland's wrong which is the most welcoming of immigrants. And as finance minister, I have to say that is a huge economic strength. Um, Wrong. Actually, it isn't. How? How is that possible when at the same time, this flood of new immigrants to the country means that the housing market is soaring out of control? Canadians can't pay for groceries. We can't pay our mortgage payments today. And yet that's strong. That's strong for Canada. That's strong for Canadians. Oh, yes, that's strong for this country. It builds our country up. Sure, people can't afford houses right now. Sure, there's no way that people can afford a home in 10 years. Sure, people are living paycheck to paycheck. Oh, but our policies strengthen Canadian. Our economy is robust and concrete. Really? Step outside, smell the flowers, and see what the truth of this nation is right now. It is a real driver of 
our country's economic growth. How is our country growing right now economically? How does it look? Look like this. You have this nice exponential increase in growth. Economy is strong. Hmm? Right. Yeah. If that's the policy, if that's the plan, if that's the strategy, it's not working. And at a time when all of the industrialized countries in the world are facing huge demographic challenges. Those challenges are being precipitated by the governments in those respective countries, just like it is here. We are extremely fortunate as a country that we have the social capacity to welcome immigrants. We don't, but we don't. Look at the chaos on the streets right now. Look at the unrest in the cities. Again, there are cultures that do not harmonize with our own. It's so ironic because we have right now this push to destroy Canadian values under the pretense of Canadian values. That is, those who are destroying the Western culture values, like Freeland, she's doing her part to make sure those values are destroyed, use Western culture and values to destroy the values. They're eating themselves alive. You are quite right that if we want to be a country that welcomes new Canadians, and I strongly believe that's the right thing for all of us. Of course she believes that. Again, she doesn't want there to be a country. No, that's actually inaccurate. She wants there to be a country. That's it. Not countries. Just one massive revelation country. A one world order. Tower of Babel. We have to build more homes faster. No, we have to stop demand. If a bathtub is overfilling with water, you have to turn off the tap. That's the rational and the common sense thing to do, which is exactly why the government wouldn't do it. Instead, they'd say, because this is what they're saying right now, let's build the bathtub higher. We'll turn on the taps as fast as they can go. We'll open up the taps and let the water flow with all the pressure that it has but we're also going to build up the tub so we can continue to do so. And it's like, well, actually, it doesn't take three seconds to build a bathtub. It takes a little bit longer than that. And so by the time you actually do build up the bathtub, the water having flown out onto the floor will have destroyed the bathroom and the basement underneath the bathroom. And that's one of the reasons I'm here. Our government is totally committed to getting more homes built for Canadians. You have seen that unrelenting focus for weeks and weeks and weeks, for months and months and months. And, you know, we started the parliamentary session in the fall by lifting the GST on purpose-built rental on projects exactly like this one. Huge impact. You know, Mike Moffat estimates that's 200 to 300,000 new homes will be built. Oh yeah. Are those homes coming tomorrow? Because the crisis is happening today. People can't pay their mortgages today. The housing crisis is present. It's not 10 years in the future. It's not 15 years in the future. The problem is happening right now. So Freeland's solution isn't a solution. Uh, you saw in the fall economic statement, we added $15 billion to the apartment construction loan financing program. Not we, it's you and I added $15 billion to that program. Canadians paid for that program. Freeland didn't pay for that program. Trudeau didn't pay for that program. The Liberal government or the Liberal Party didn't reach into their pocketbooks and pay for that program. Canadians paid for that program which is financing projects exactly like this. And one of the reasons I'm so glad to be here today is to highlight the work on getting more homes built faster. We have been pushing very, very hard over the past few months, but it's not brand new. This project started in 2018 and was made possible by programs that were in place then. And the final thing that I will highlight when it comes to getting more homes built faster, which we absolutely need, it is the most pressing economic and also social priority, is the Housing Accelerator Fund. That is having a transformative impact 
that is something that was launched in the 2022 budget. The Housing Accelerator Fund is socialist, supremely socialist. You look at the list of requirements that are needed in order to qualify for funding or to receive funding from the government, from you and I again, actually, and it's low carbon community, uh, resilient community, uh, high density community, basically a downtown little compact town that resembles something out of 1984, something Orwellian, gives government more control. And by the way, of course, Freeland and her cackle again bypassed provincial governments and went right to municipalities, which is a gross trespass over what the boundaries of the federal government should be, which is nothing new for the federal government. There was a lot of eye rolling, a lot of skepticism. Will this ever happen? Will it make a difference? Well, it is. It's being rolled out. We did a deal with Toronto before the end of the year, and that will mean more than 50,000 additional homes get built, and it's $471 million for the city of Toronto. Freeland didn't answer the question because, again, the answer is not what, or because the answer she knows is not what Canadians want to hear. That is, they have no desire or intention to slow or stop new Canadians, no, new individuals coming to Canada. Because their goal is to cur- is to turn Canada. Freeland's goal is to turn Canada into something that isn't Canada. There's no answer to the question. I'll ask it now. Thank you. Uh, today, uh, a, a, re- a recent poll by Abacus Data suggests that the Liberal government is falling further out of favor with Canadians. If there was an uh, election held today, the poll suggests that 41% of Canadians would vote for the Conservative government, 20, excuse me, 24% for your government. Why do you believe? Not surprising. The federal government, the Liberal government, the Liberal Party is falling out of favor with Canadians because the Liberal government long, long ago fell out of favor with truth and reality. Believe that your government continues to fall further out of favor with Canadians and what work do you believe needs to be done? The work that needs to be done is the resignation of Freeland and Trudeau, and other liberal ministers. That would increase their popularity to a position they have never before seen. Um, Really, thank you for that question. Because I wake up every single morning. I know Marcy wakes up every single morning also. uh, Thinking about the challenges Canadians face right now and thinking about how we can work harder and more effectively to meet those challenges. I believe her. I'm sure she does wake up every single morning thinking about the challenges that Canadians are facing and then goes on to say, how can I make those challenges even more difficult? How can I make life even harder for Canadians so that they have no choice but to run to me and Mr. Trudeau? and Sean Fraser and Stephen Gilbeau asking desperately for a handout so they can feed their children. That's how Freeland wakes up every morning. That's what we're doing. Uh, From my perspective, the single biggest challenge Canadians are facing right now is housing. Wrong. Other than sin, it's this liberal government. Other than sin, it's Trudeau and Freeland and the Liberal Party, the NDP party. They're the ones who are introducing all of these economic problems to the nation. And Canadians are suffering because of it. And that's why we're here making a housing announcement, highlighting some of the really important work that is happening, pointing to a model approach to building not only affordable housing, but real communities, talking about the first home savings account, highlighting that so that Canadians know That's a really effective way to save for that first home of your own. I recognize that these are really hard times for a lot of Canadians. Again, I believe her. I'm sure she does recognize that these are difficult times for Canadians and hard times for Canadians. But if she were to say, and I'm working to try and make sure they're not difficult, I wouldn't believe her because her actions speak something entirely opposite. And... Our government's response is going to be to get up every day to focus on the challenge at hand and to work as hard as we can to answer it. Accurate. And what is the challenge at hand for the federal government? What are they trying to meet? What is the objective they're trying to pursue? The materialization 
of the vision of Antichrist 